I'm out here doing office work. Please excuse me one moment. This office work is very important. I need to get it done before I can start, start the stream. Okay, I think I'm good to go. So good morning satellites. Welcome back to another stream today I am playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I never played the non Ultra Deluxe so I really don't know what's the difference but I'm excited either way. My apologies for starting late. I mean one it was a surprise stream anyways so I could have started at any time but I originally I s announced it 15 minutes before 8 and then 8 came but I was in the middle of a really bad storm so I thought okay maybe not a good idea to start a stream in the middle of an extremely bad storm. So I decided to wait till the worst of it passed. And the worst of it, I believe, has passed. There was a tornado near me, I want to say like 15 minutes away. But I don't think, I'm not sure of any... It's, it's passed. That, that's the point. It's passed. So we can begin the game. I have never played this, but I have seen other people play it. So I'm very excited. This seems like a fun game. Like this a game I would be into. This is a man named Stanley. Stanley... Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Nice. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. It sounds boring, the but very easy. Might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. Oh, he's found his calling. Stanley That's good. Was happy. And we're going to take that away from him. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. I wonder if he this gets paid well. isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Oh, Shot, no. frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I guess Stanley got out of his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I don't know where the meeting room is. You didn't tell me. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Okay. What? They just disappeared and left all this paper. Like, that's very unprofessional of a company. I need to reconsider. Stanley should reconsider his employment here. What's this? Knowing your city before you can possibly know where it begins. Okay, that's cool. Oh, someone was doing work in there. What's that? Sales this quarter have gone down. This does not make sense. Oh, someone was very angry and threw, uh, drew a non- When Stanley came door. to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I go back. I right, to the left, I guess. I guess you just control me, huh? You control Stanley, huh? Four thirteen. no co-worker there. It's a very big building. I shouldn't say very big. Actually, it's average for a company. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, 
Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. What to do about 4.32? Huh. Someone's getting fired. 4.51s. 4x. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. Rip Franz. What happened to Franz? Ah. Oh. Targets. Push for funding for R plus D of new coffee machine. Standard graphs for about not efficient funds. Get the Chris. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Who moves my desk? Keep. Please keep the targets on the topic of blank 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 blank. The future was yesterday. The tomorrow is now. Complete today's unfinished agenda items. Write the day's next agenda reflect. Huh. Alright, the boss appreciate minutes. On your boss appreciation minute worksheet, circle with the top 20 things you love most about your boss for that. Okay. Uh, if you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself, but more inclined towards conflict, unless you're the kind of person who initiates conflict, why do we hire you? Okay, never mind. What are your dreams? Success, comatose travel, comatose. Less air, pollution, a boat, mitosis? What is going on here? Just talk less, do unbelievable amazing work all the time every day with no exception of promotion or recognition, and don't get fired. Great tip to not get fired. How to solve it. Let a ball up inside you, take it out, pass regrets from other coworkers, resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Huh. Teenagers. Is that our, one of our target demographics? Death sport portion in the primary review schedule. But I think that's a stupid idea. Someone's not happy. Everyone's unique. Me, most of all. Oh, thank you. I'll leave on that happy note. A broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. Hold on. There's a broom in here, at least. There was nothing here. No choice to make. No path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Yeah, but it has a broom. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Oh, that's a swear word. <laughs> it's okay, we're 18 plus here. Are you are you really still in the broom closet? This, Standing around doing nothing? Why? Listen, Stanley wants Please a broom. Give me some explanation here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. Stanley wants the broom and you won't give him the broom. Did you see the mess that's been laid out there with all the papers? Stanley needs to clean this up. I do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. Good sir, why can't Stanley mention. jump? Why is it so loud in here? We need to hire someone to fix this noise. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. Just for that, I'm staying in here. Friends find this concerning. You're being you're being very judgmental for my decision to want a broom. So I go into the broom closet. So you Stanley know what? Stanley's going to stay here. Really, really wow! He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Wow! What is your problem, sir? Stanley just wanted a broom. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. I'm moving around, in actually. In a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. That would be pretty bad, yeah. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. Too bad I'm wearing headphones. Any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. 
it's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. You said a lot there and I picked nothing up. That, just step out into the hallway. No, this is my this is my corner now. This is where I feel comfortable. Why would I want to leave such a safe space? Plus I didn't get an achievement for this yet and I want an achievement for this. Or is there really none? Is this really just pointless? Was my time here all for naught? Was there no purpose behind this? Is there any purpose behind anything? You think he's gonna say one more thing? No, I'm not going out. He needs to say one more thing, then I'll leave. Just one more. Is he, is he not? I... Okay, I guess I won't waste any more time in the broom closet. Ah, second player, it's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Oh yeah, how about I go back in the broom closet? You too? <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps oh, I feel you there. You can hand the controls to... The fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Alright, I'll wait here less than a minute. 30 seconds. Okay, I don't have that much of an attention span. Oh, shucks. Alright, fine. I'll leave. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. You know, I'm not a fan of you telling Stanley what to do all the time. He's his own independent person. Um, one of these days, he's going to disobey you. A bathroom. <gasps> what? To be rich is... To be rich. Is it a crime? To commit crimes, isn't it rich? What a life it would be to have to pick just one. Um, commentary on the rich. All right, lovely bathroom here. Oh, Mr. Boss. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. This is an Shocked, office. Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. All right, tell Stanley what it is. Eight, four, five. Two, eight, four, of course, five. Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yeah, no way Stanley could have known. No way Stanley could have known that the passcode is 2845. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code. Statistically speaking, if you have an unlimited amount of time and just start putting codes in, you're going to get it eventually. Passageway. Oh, hey, look at this. An elevator. I don't have a flashlight. All right, down the creepy elevator we go.
Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as uh -huh. though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? He was content. This question would not go unanswered for long. Why would he need to question when he's content? He's he's doing a job. He's getting paid for it. I'm sure his life outside of it Stanley is worth it. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read "Mind Control Facility." Oh, this says escape. Now let's go this way. I will hit the big button. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find <laughs> out? Sure, why not? Stanley seems like a strong individual person. Oh, a camera. Now the monitors jumped to life. <sighs> Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number 104 of an was fired. in the building. Stanley's co workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. Mm. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. I was 427, which is right there. Oh, I lost it. Dang it. Or, oh, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till the picture comes back. Oh, that's a pretty boring picture, actually. What's this? 425. Something's up with 425. This going mind up? control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? But if you're happy, that's so wrong. No. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His Employee pirates? In someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? No. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? No. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Will I? Is that what you want me to do? I mean, I'll do it if you say so. I don't know where the other ones are. I know where five is. Maybe they're in here. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty his obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Heck no, let's control people's minds. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself, is that I'm the one with power. <laughs> oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. 
If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency uh -oh. detonation system. Uh -oh. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? No. It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. No, I don't oh, want this, this anymore. This is better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. Where's what Zero? Just moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. I What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. Where's Zero? I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. I don't know where oh, Zero goodness. is. Only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Well, where's Zero? Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big this colored red ones? Button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. I'm but gonna figure this out. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big... Oh, no! No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life. Uh, I'm dead. Stanley's dead. I'm sorry, Stanley. Happily ever right. Dang, Stanley really did get blown up. Uh, sorry, Stanley. <laughs> I did. There was nothing you could have done. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Because there's no one at the door, but I remember five, five, uh, I don't remember. It was one of the 500 doors had something going on with it. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, nah. this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what Stanley's doing. Stopping by the employee lounge. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. 
It had really been worth the detour after all, just yeah. to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Yes. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Ah, uh, that's cool, but let me look at this room first. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Ouch. Do not lie if you are lying right now. Stop. Am I lying? I don't believe I'm lying. Alright, alright, alright. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion. It will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off it is $5,000. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot. Ah! But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story <laughs> and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Stanley just wanted a little bit of control in his life. You kept trying to take that away from him and he made the All of his uh, ultimate jump. Gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Alright. Let's go right again, but we won't jump off this when time. Stanley, Stanley won't jump off. Of two open doors. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps hey. he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Uh, walking wow. past this. Yes, this room. Wow. What? But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Or how about no? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I need a card. I wish I could jump. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, mm -hmm. but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. I feel There's like you're lying to me. Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration <laughs> for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you to show right. you something beautiful. Look, All right, I feel I feel a little bad about that one. That I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Uh, you know what? You know what, Mr. Narrator? I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a chance. I, I feel a little bad about that one. It was a little rude to just jump off while you're doing a thing. I feel a little bad. Just a little bit. So I'll, I'll, I'll listen to the next, in, next instruction you give me. Now listen carefully. This is important. Okay, okay. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, all right. The red door. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. I, I felt bad. I really have wanted you to be happy all this time. The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? Well, are you I the just, one causing this? I wanted to stop. I believe you. You I sound would, genuine to me. We would both be so much happier if we just stopped. Oh. And I think, well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. It's dark. I don't want to go in there. All right, I'll go in there. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Stars? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. Uh, I, feel, I feel very happy for you, Mr. Narrator. I'm very glad for you. Uh-huh. I don't want to take it away from Mr. Narrator, but I also kind of want to leave. Ooh, hold up. This is new. All right, Mr. Narrator, did you want me to stay here forever? Also, stars don't move like that in the in like a sky. Like obviously they move, but not not like this. All right, Mr. Narrator, if you don't give me a reason to stay any longer, I'm heading out of here. I'm out of here. Audi. I 
No, wait. Where are you going? Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Right. Where were we? Well, you gotta tell me something, Mr. Narrator. I'm just... We can't stay here forever. It's wonderful, it's a nice breather, but we can't stay here. I'm sorry, Mr. Narrator, but I've gotta go. Oh no! Stay away from those stairs! If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset! We'll lose all of this! Do you, do you not want to lose all of this? I... What's going on, Mr. Narrator? Good, good. We can't be too safe. Promise me you won't go back there, hmm? Just, just stay here. I can't promise that. I'm sorry. This is getting boring now. No! What do we talk about? You're risking everything we achieved here! You keep pulling me back and forth are this you, colors night. You are going to stay here, aren't you? Uh, nope. Oh, that's fine. I just like pulling at your heartstrings. I am going to touch me before, didn't you? You will die. What about this? Isn't getting through to you? If I touch the stairs, I doubt it. Let's go. See, I'm still alive. The stairs aren't hurting me. Please, no, Stanley. Let me stay here. Don't take this from me. I thought you were the one in control. Please, Stanley, oh. think about what you're doing. I didn't want to do this. Can I can I break down this door? Oh no. Is there is there another way? Is there another way? I want to have my cake and eat it too. I don't want Mr. Narrator to get all hurt. Well, where are the stars? All right. You've lost me. I'm jumping. You took away the stars. What's the point? Ba, 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 ba. If you can guess that song, congratulations. You are the new VIP um, for this chat. All right, here we go. I'm no! sorry. I'm alive. Oh. Thank God, you li- No, 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 what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? I feel really bad. But you, you open up, you're the one who can open up a door for me. Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? I'll give her one more shot. Yes. Perhaps you can. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking about. I know you'll see. You'll see that we can't be happy if we leave this place. You can see that, can't you? This is... Mr. Narrator, you gotta add more to this. You have to stimulate Stanley's brain a little more. Stanley can't take this. This was nice at first, but after decades of being here, he just no, can't do it anymore. Perhaps not. Stanley needs to move on, and I think it's time you move on too, Mr. Narrator. Can't be here. My God. Right, Is this really how much you dislike my game? No, Did Mr. Narrator. You yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? No, you Mr. Are Narrator. You're willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. If you open Am this I door. the situation correctly? Absolutely not. I right, missed the narrator. I'll see you on the other side. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. I tried. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. I mean, if you let me go through the door, you can open up a door, can't you? 
This is on you, Mr. Narrator. I'm not taking the blame for this. Is it over? I think it's going so. To restart, isn't it? I'm sorry, I'm Narrator. Back. Oh, that was a little sad. I feel bad for the narrator. But it had to be done. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I hate Mondays. Classic Garfield. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, right, go this way. he entered the door on his left. I'm going to try the going to the escape room. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's oh. coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Heck no, I'm going downstairs. Oh. I can't read that. It's too small. But Stanley just couldn't do it. Why is there he the possibility of a car here? Boss. How did a car get in here? He had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. Oh, and yeah. in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All what? of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he went <gasps> down? Oh my well, goodness, where are his feet? behind him wherever he went. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. He's not I'm real. dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Yes, Stanley. Oh, it's just a dream. Relief, Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. There you go, Stanley. So he enjoy your time. Himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself oh, that's me. soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. Sorry, sorry, thank you. How was he remaining so loose? Apparently. And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Excellent question. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me Thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it how be? How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. And it's quite unusual. Course, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would this prove boy. it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. He's very content with I his life, that's for sure. And my wife 
and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Oh no, but it wasn't all okay. Stanley didn't wake up. Stanley He's still began here. screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone? I'm a real voice? boy. Who am, I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Well, that's just not true. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her Stanley, place. no! On this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself. Stanley then was crazy. on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. Stanley. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Did she call an ambulance? Hmm. A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started, and if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. Yeah, that's different. These doors are open and I want to go through them. Hmm. Alright, I'll keep going forward, I suppose. Stanley, you'll figure this out someday, I'm sure of it. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Yes, we've been through Feeling this. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. <gasps> it opened? What? No, what are you doing to the panda? Business strategy? Shoot a panda in the head? Well, Stanley better leave. Go up. What's in store for us if we go up? Oh, nice elevator music. Hey, that's got my name. Oh, it's the narrator. I'm jamming out. Huh. Stanley. 
Stand. Green. He's never he's getting bored now, yeah. A tall elevator. Hey, can I do something? I don't know why we were in there so long. Alright, let's go down. <laughs> why are these glowing? Dun da 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 dun 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 da 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 Stanley Ah, uh, it's just it's just gonna be the same thing. Ah, oh, shucks, okay. Alright, so it it took me nowhere, that's wonderful. Okay, that was a fun little detour. Stepping into his manager's office. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books what? off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. Uh, but of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code what? by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh, another elevator. I pressed up, but okay. Oh, you can't go back up. Oh, is that going to change anything? Oops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find <laughs> out. Uh, because I didn't think I uh, Stanley could actually do that. I don't know, maybe it's something new. Maybe something different happened. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Up. Oh, all right. You called you called me out, Mr. Narrator. You called me out. Let's just go back. <laughs> Let's just go back down. Incredible. <laughs> now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? All right, Mr. Narrator. You can calm down a bit here. He's, he has so much attitude. Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor where Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. 
can fly to Zong, call exit 914 immediately. I could. You know what? I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off this time. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Ooh, Stanley spooky. So spooky. Did he have the strength to find out? I wonder what it could be. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom and- 528, that's what it was, 528. I gotta remember that. 528 and 234, huh? All right, 528 though. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Hmm. Excuse me. I tickle in my throat. Let's go, Stanley. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. He just His could own not. Life in someone else's control? Never. Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Impossible. Had he spent his entire life utterly blind <coughs> to the world. Excuse me. No, he couldn't have. Stanley? No that way. Proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. No. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Off. It's very dark now. blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty uh oh was it over did we do it what did it cost yes everything he had won i did it he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command yes freedom was mere moments away and yet even as the immense door slowly opened, it has been Stanley slow. reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? It's a mystery. How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking but happiness. happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. This isn't like some portal thing where it's Stanley a fake outside. Felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. Hmm. And Stanley was happy. As long as Stanley's happy. That was my first achievement. What about all the other stuff I did? I just got I just got the achievement. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. Hmm. I wish I can go through some of these other doors.
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he and this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. All right, I'm gonna jump off the pad again. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I still haven't done that. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I know, I, I know. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Me? There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for uh, others? Oh, Are we've been convinced that I want something bad to happen to you. We've been Why? through this before. I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now, listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. <laughs> nope. I'm not listening to you anymore. <laughs> Perhaps you misunderstood. Hey. Stanley walked through the red door. I don't like this. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. This is my this is Stanley's life and Stanley wants to walk through the blue door. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Do you see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Well, that's your fault. Broken you underestimated Stanley. Developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for um, you? Where's the broken rooms? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. <sighs> Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. I think a driving Please. section would have been cool. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. Oh, I love that. There we go. A third option. A third so option? The feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. I worked hard to get this third option. I'm going to take it. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. You Would know what? You say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices. Yeah. Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Yeah, I liked it. I, good job. You see, I knew I was onto something. Yeah, Where good job. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? You're a genius, well, Mr. Narrator. It's instinct, mostly. A calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. The, it's Without your calling, Mr. Stand, Narrator. Don't even try. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. But I'm ready. Perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's <clears> take a look. Excuse me. Oh! Word where I have meterboard? Am I on it? Good old Neil. In total, 91,000 separate doors open, doors attempted. Wow, lots of steps taken. You can know that 21.3% of players skipped the intro sequence, only the worst 33% of players chose the blue door. 98.9% .9 of players are more attractive to Stanley. How long does it take you to get to the correct door? Complete against the others to improve your Stanley parable career. Ah, I see. That's me. In total, okay. Let's take this third option. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. I'm gonna give it a four. It was good. It was good. Think it could have been improved better, but it was it was good. Four. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working <gasps> on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some play testing. Heck yeah, let's you do this. You mind taking a look at it, would you? Not at all. Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, <laughs> baby crawls left towards danger. Okay. You click the button to move him back to the right. And if he reaches the fire, you fail. 
It's a very meaningful game. Yeah, All about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. Yeah, I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. Oh, so gotcha. why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, I can't do- I can't press it anymore. I- I hope this baby's gone. Yes, good. Nah, it's, I'm okay with it. Because you hate babies or purely to spite me. A uh, bit of both. Matter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. I it's mean, over. if you just made the Thank noise you different. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's okay. see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, this seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. I wonder what game we're going to be playing. Aha! Is this? What do you is this Firewatch? This about, I played this story? game. What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you. No, this Firewatch. It's it's a story-based game. It's it's a pretty good story. Not much to the gameplay itself, but that's not yes, the focus. The story is the focus. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it's I mean, it's 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 a pretty good Come, let's experience. That's what I like to call it. There. It's a pretty good experience. Yeah, this is definitely Firewatch. I believe that's what it's called. Oh, no. Did the same people oh, make no, it? No, it can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Yes. Good God, quickly block it off. No. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. What have you done? I really wandered off into that that thing, that big open. Just wandering around, no right or wrong direction. I found a gap. No path to follow. You can just go in any. Oh, 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 thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Ah, oh, okay, shucks. I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game, preferably something with walls, something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. No. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> okay. I think this will be just the thing. Okay. Rocket League? Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, um, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's uh, see. I need a vehicle, I there believe. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Uh. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. No vehicle? Oh, I can sprint. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I worked so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist. But if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely the two multiple balls. balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm going to try it out. Here comes another ball. Yes. Oh, goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? Oh, good job. Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls.
Are you enjoying this, Stanley? Uh, not you particularly. No, Is not this really. Is a real video game? Well, I sure hope you're having a good time because guess what? It's over. That's right. Oh, I'm okay Your with that. Fun comes to an end. I'm this okay is with my that. Game, and what I say goes. You get to have fun when I let you, Stanley. Besides, That's okay, you yeah. need That's someone okay. like me to set boundaries for you. Without rules or boundaries, video games are nothing. Yes, that's what I am. I'm structure. I'm your sense of purpose. And since you decided you didn't want to play my game, now I don't want to play with you either. So, goodbye, Stanley. I'm leaving. See how you like it when I'm not around to set the rules. Somehow, I don't think you'll enjoy it as much. But who knows? You're an inventive kid. You'll come up with something. After all, you're the one who knows best. Heck yeah, Take I do. Take care, Stanley. Very good, very good. Oh, you're just leaving me? Uh, okay. You know, Mr. Narrator, you're a bit of a jerk sometimes. Hold on, what are you doing? Well, you didn't give me anything to do. Oh! I thought Stanley, I was going to start over. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. Okay. Here I am. Oh. Oh, I'm in the 500s. Oh, are there more? Because I'm. I was like 528, I think. Okay, I guess not. Very interesting place. Oh, light. What is that? Hmm. Oh, this is my old office. I'm so lost without the narrator. All right, I guess I don't do anything there. I go back. Hello? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. And he's stuck I wonder there if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. Mm. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Bo what? I'm back. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could not. I think that is where I'm going to end it for tonight. What a wonderful game, and we're looking to explore more of it. So. Until next time, I hope all you lovely satellites have a wonderful night, and goodbye.